Welcome to this demonstration of Applied SAN Analytics. I will start with a brief overview of the SAN Nav Management Portal, and then we're going to look at a use case example where we apply SAN Analytics to understand an application performance issue, root cause it, and how to solve for it. Okay, let's jump straight in and take a look at the SAN Nav Management Portal, which is a centralized point for management configuration, troubleshooting analytics, as well as reporting. When we log in, we land on the predefined default health summary dashboard designed to provide a general health overview of SAN entities, while also serving as a launch point to additional functions. If we here look at a switch status, we can explore additional actions like launching into the newly redesigned web tools interface where one can further configure switch ports, as well as gain insights into the health status and current utilization. Also, you can make use of widgets, allowing you to you know, view additional information and detail around hardware status and events on your switch. Now, let's go back to SANNAV and take a look into device health. Here, you can see additional details around why this entity is in a degraded state. In this case, the host is experiencing high utilization and lacks redundant paths. Health is calculated on a predefined set of thresholds and you can modify it if you need to in your environment. Entities can also be launched into topology view. As we can see here, and then once in topology view, you can further expand to show switches, devices, and ports. And in turn, you know, expand into additional launch points from here. These context-based topologies allows us to also filter based on a device. And in this case here, we filtered on a storage device and we can see, okay, which devices are sewn to this device. And again, here we can look at the ports for that host that's connected. We can see properties for that port, or we could launch directly into investigation from here. Now I'm gonna go back into the dashboard view. Here we can choose to either view a user created or predefined dashboard. I'm gonna select the NPTC dashboard that we talked about earlier, where I can see top congested ports and severity, as well as oversubscription transitions for all ports in the fabric. By investigating such ports, SANNAV provides additional troubleshooting guidance by pre-selecting you know, relevant metrics to be correlated. Users can also choose to view historical data, related ports being affected, as well as extract and investigate flows currently traversing the port to further help identify the root cause. Now let's go take a look at inventory. SANNAV provides predefined filters to help easily identify entities of interest. And also from here, you can manage auto learned flows and flow collections. In addition, you can make use of custom filters and universal search for quick device identification throughout the management platform. As we go take a look at events, on the events page, we are presented with all events and alerts from any discovered entities, as well as from the management server itself. Note that advanced filtering and search can also be applied here. By expanding events, we can view probable causes and expose additional functionality from the drop-down menus. The violation tab consist of alerts triggered by thresholds that have been exceeded on either ports or flows monitored by maps. We can then expand the violation as well and pursue further into investigation. When we launch into investigation mode, SANNAV provides troubleshooting guidance via pre-selection of relevant metrics, and in this case, the involved flow exceeding the defined threshold. Users can then begin to correlate these metrics with other metrics 
or violations for root cause analysis. Finally, let's take a look at the SANNAV settings and configurations tab. This is where you do your fabric discoveries, vCenter discoveries, also where you can manage fast versions across your switches. You can back up your SANNAV server and just do you know, all the management functions for SANNAV. So now that we've done the overview of the SANNAV management portal, let's look at a use case. So in our example, the application owner using Oracle Server 1 complains it's not performing properly almost daily around 3 p.m. So to analyze and understand if this is related to the SAN, we're going to start by going into the Network Port Traffic, Traffic Conditions dashboard and display top congested and oversubscribed ports. And so in here, we can see that a port has been exposing severe congestion between 2.50 and 3.10 p.m. And so to analyze further, we select to investigate the port, which we can see from the name is connected to an exchange server. And so let's click on that and go into investigation mode. When we do so, there's already metrics selected that are relevant to um, the fact that it was called out as being causing congestion. And what we can see here is that the TX utilization has been dropping drastically, while C3 discards are increasing, and practically the storage traffic comes to a halt for this exchange server clearly exposing a behavior uh, of congestion for a period of time. Now to understand if this is impacting the Oracle server, which was what the application owner complained about, we go here to inventory of flow data and pick the Oracle server. As we look at the related flow data, we can see the Oracle server is affected by the slow drain behavior of the exchange server. As a result, the read response time for the server goes all the way up to 80 milliseconds in the period when the exchange server periodically exposes slow drain behavior leading to congestion. In general terms, we describe this situation as the exchange server is the culprit and the Oracle server is the victim. As we talked about in the intro, Brocade has a maps feature, the monitoring and alerting policy suite where there's a built-in slow drain device quarantine function to automatically quarantine slow drain devices by placing the flow on a low priority VCs and avoiding any impact to other flows. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna open the active policy for the switch and then I'm gonna enable uh, slow drain device quarantine. And then the next day, we go back to the NPTC dashboard. And we notice that the next occurrence of this slow drain behavior or congestion behavior from the exchange server is immediately mitigated, now displayed only to be moderate. As we scroll down, we can see the exchange server port was placed in quarantine at 2.56 p.m. If we investigate further, further, we can understand what happened and we can see the exchange server exposed the same behavior as before as its read performance went down because there was a very high number of C3 discards, which basically means that there was a timeout on the queue latency, and this triggered quarantine. Now let's go back and see how this impacted the Oracle server as we open the flow investigation here. And what we see is that in this case, there was a minimal impact on the Oracle server, which consistently performed, performed reads under 0, 0 0.16 milliseconds. And thereby, the congestion caused by the exchange server was effectively mitigated using slow drain device quarantine, which is also the reason we recommend to always enable it. This concludes this demonstration. Thank you for watching.
For more information, please go to Broadcom.com. Thank you.